Hey, it's Rob Jackson and Steve Albright with Fandroid.com. We're here with the Nexus 7 Android tablet that was just announced at Google I.O. Down here we've got the Nexus Q streaming media player uh, from Google and we just connected it. So we're using the Nexus 7 with the Nexus Q to play music on our home network, in this case our hotel network. But Steve's going to show us a little about how to do that on the tablet. Okay, so the first initial thing that you have to do is set up the Q. When you open up the Q software, which you can get from the Play Store for a compatible device, uh, it's simple. You connect both Wi-Fi, uh, both to Wi-Fi. You set it all up from one device, and then you can add a device um, similar to any other kind of streaming devices, that, like the Sonos that we did a review on not too long ago. But it's pretty similar. You have a couple basic settings that we don't need to get into. If we open up Google Play, which I have in the background, I'm going to adjust the volume on this. You can hear it streaming. And notice up on the action bar we have the blue triangle play button. That's actually telling you that it is streaming wirelessly. You can either stream local or wireless. If you have a guest in your house, they can simply grab their own device, open up the Q software. You can send them an email invite, but it's a real basic instructions on how to download the software. Once you get it set up, all you have to do is click on the device and if I have the setting in, on this master device allowing guests, you can connect up if you're on the same Wi-Fi and take control. So if we look at some of the options, like <coughs> let's see, you can change what the theme is, right? Sure. Um, let's go into the queue itself. And I'll select bedroom and we'll go into theme and uh, let's just do spectrum. Whoa. So now we got that additional, is sweet. additional visualization. Uh, if I do adjust the volume on the device, it will adjust the volume on the TV as well. If I didn't just lose connection. <laughs> Our Wi Fi is very poor right here. Yeah, we're in a hotel, so we're using a Wi Fi hotspot to connect it all. So if you're on a home network, chances are this is going to work a lot better. And on this device here, you can, whoa, that light is cool. I guess when the music's playing, then it shows this in different colors, but uh, this twist, so twisting to the left, volume down, twisting to the right, volume up, and if you touch it, then it will, um, then it will mute. You can also, this is NFC, right? Right, so, um, <clears throat> as you can see, oh, maybe it won't do it when, I just muted it, but... But you can basically bump music up to the TV. So if you are on YouTube or something, you put it up there, and it sends the sends the media directly to the television by um, through NFC. So go ahead. Can you just change a song or something, and we can see how that works with the? Actually, let me open up YouTube, and we'll go from there. See what we got here. Alright, so you see the same actual... Uh, can you stand up so we can see the uh, yeah, seat sure. in the background? <clears throat> you still see the play button right there, so I just threw up Whoa. the video and it plays right on the screen streaming, which is very convenient. And you will notice that um, actually this morning I, we got like five or six app updates. Google updated all the apps to support this new action bar with the, the Q settings built into each app. So, that's so how did you send it to the TV? Was there anything special you have to do? No, I think it's a, it's a global setting, so if I'm already streaming to the device, it will actually pick it right up and continue streaming. But it's that little button. Right, so if I turn this off, it's just going to play local. Okay. Um, that's the same in Google Play. If we go in here and I click on an album, and I can either hit play here or here. If I hit play up top here on the action bar, it's going to start streaming directly to the TV. Sweet. And, um, I think Rob already said that we are just connected to an HDMI cable, which is just video and audio all in one. It has optical out, HDMI, which is both audio and video, and then you have your, uh, your analog as well. So chances are too, um, you may want to use this LAN to connect and it will be a lot quicker with, on a wired connection which we would do if we weren't in a hotel room. Um, let's check out some of those data visualization things. Are we still connected here? Yeah, we're still connected. Let's just see all the different data. I'm kind of curious. That Spectrum one was awesome. All right, let me play your music here. All 
I'm actually not sure. There we, there we go. So there's another visualization. This is just called warm. Cool. Blue, which I think was the default, maybe? I think Spectrum was the default. But. Smoke. And you can also have track info. But whatever you really prefer. I think. Uh, I like that one. That one's pretty nice. And both warm and cool are pretty nice. Depending on what you're listening to, I guess. So the idea, too, is that you can set up different rooms on here. You can have different devices connected. You can change your play cue. We don't have this in our ho own home right now, so it's hard to visualize how it would work when all the different pieces come together. When you've got, you know, a setup in the kitchen, in the living room, in the bedroom, and you've got multiple people connected. So once we get this home and we're able to connect it to a, a real living situation, we'll do a more in-depth review. Um, but that gives you a quick idea of uh, the Nexus Q playing home or streaming media on the Nexus 7 uh, Android tablet. And stay tuned to fandroid.com for a more detailed review once we get get back and, and get to put it through the paces in a, in a more real-life setting. So thanks, everybody. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. Talk to you guys soon.